Hey, and welcome to the first episode of Sea Blue Smarts. This is all about raising hot topics of the moment and inviting special guests to join us who work in that area. So um, before we start, let me just introduce myself. I'm Helen. I'm the co-founder of Sea Blue Marketing. We help B2B uh, tech sector businesses to accelerate their growth. So I'll just hand straight over to Orla for a quick introduction. Hi, thanks, Helen. I'm Orla Murphy, and I'm the other um, co-founder and director of Seablue Marketing. And today we want to talk about marketing and sales alignment. There are two functions within a business that need to work together, but oftentimes there is a tension between the, the, the two areas. So we really wanted to explore that a little more. How can we help sales and marketing work better together? And to help us, we have uh, a special guest, so uh, a, a salesperson. Dan, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Hello, um, I'm Dan. I've worked uh, for 15 or 20 years in um, global sales, working for one of the largest technology companies in the world. So my job is all about trying to influence purchasing decisions, uh, perhaps use up kind of standard uh, procurement processes so that you can build a relationship with board level members of large companies making technology decisions. Brilliant. Well placed to give us some really valuable insights on, on sales. So there are, there are three areas that we wanted to, um, to talk about this morning. Um, I suppose one is the, the engagement between sales and marketing, that initial upfront engagement, how, how do we improve it? Um, and then we'll look at the roles that sales and marketing fulfill and, and how, and, you know, our, our, your thoughts and, and our collective thoughts on, on how we can improve that. Um, and then finally, when it comes to creating demand, you know, getting the right, the right, the right quality and, and, and the right, you know, conversion rates. And, um, you know, again, that's often where we see tensions arise, right? If, if we're not, um, if that's not fulfilling our mutual um, objectives. So, so we'd like to explore that um, in a little bit more detail. So Orla, uh, unless a, a chief revenue officer is in place, typically sales and marketing are of course separate departments. So in your experience, what, what do you think is really fundamental to get set straight before you start on any given project? Do you know, I, I think the, the one thing is you have both teams need to be clear in terms of what are the objectives? Like what, what are you trying to achieve? What what are the forecasts? What are the targets? Right. Um, and, and the marketing team that isn't clear on that is not going to be able to fulfill the expectations of, of their sales colleagues. Right, so that's first and foremost. Then I think it's about looking at understanding who your audience is we know that's that you know that's the core of successful marketing is knowing who you're talking to and really you know your sales your sales colleagues have valuable insight into into that targeting so targeting segmentation so who am i going after but then again inside you know from a marketing perspective what's the sales cycle right am i am i dealing with you know a, a six week six month two year sales cycle that impacts what we do from from a marketing perspective right so we need to nurture that relationship through the length of the sales cycle um and, and then things like understanding what um you know, back to us was the commercial items what what's the average order value probably linked to the length of the sales cycle but not always and more more complex high value deals will naturally take take longer. But what's the average order value? Um, again, to indicate the level of effort from a, from a marketing perspective. Um, and then I think the other area to to really have the conversation about is is the conversion rates. And that's a conversation that starts up front to ensure that you're going to hit you know the right level, the right volume. Um, the right quality that's going to convert to deliver the the end result, but that's a conversation that continues throughout the entire um, you know the entire year, the entire project, the entire campaign. That that dialogue never stops. But but I think they're definitely the key things that I would see from a from a marketer's perspective that I would want to be talking to to my sales colleagues about. And I guess, you know, Dan, you know, what are your thoughts? Like what, what are the key conversations 
um, that you think are essential to have with marketing from a sales perspective? Um, I guess in my experience, there's always been a very healthy rivalry between sales and marketing. You know, as a salesperson, we expect so much from marketing. They're responsible for working out who your, your customers should be, what products those customers need, what's unique about your products, um, for producing all of the collateral that enables you to position those um, products with customers. So if marketing do their job well, sales should be dead easy. You know, then sales is just about building relationships, yeah. uh, identifying challenges and how they can be um how a solution can be provided with you know what, what we have available so i would say you know there's a there's um some tension between marketing and sales because often you know those um those pieces are not provided as as well as they could be and obviously sales are responsible for those numbers which you know uh, which are the proof as to whether um you know all this marketing work is 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 working or not so i'd say um you know that alignment and integration is crucially important yeah it's an interesting point because you, you talk about that that healthy rivalry and tension but sometimes it can it can go a bit bit more than that and it it, it can you know escalate so i guess what you know what are the challenges? What are the issues? What what makes it, it boil over, right? And and how how can both parties try and you know recover? You know, sometimes the case of recovering the relationship, right? Um, but I suppose maintain a constructive tension rather than than it becoming a destructive relationship. I think um, I can I can see great opportunities for you know strong collaboration between sales and marketing, um, particularly. You know, when you mention high value customers, if you've got that opportunity to invest time on a customer basis. So if I think about my job, um, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to manage a portfolio of customers, but also I'm expected to build relationships with brand new prospects. And that's a challenging thing to do as a salesperson, because you've got the day to day um, challenges of looking after customers, solving problems, mm -hmm. making sure that all of your uh, products and services are performing. But at the same time, you've got, you know, these uh, high value prospects, which you want to connect with at board level. And, and that is not easy because these uh, C level, so whether it's CIO, CEO type level individuals, they'll be getting you know a hundred introductions from eager salespeople every single day and those introductions will typically take the form of email or linkedin um, contacts um, and most of them will just you know uh, be disregarded because these are the most important people in the company they're probably more um, time pressured than you know than anybody um, um, and they've, you know, they've got a lot on their plate. So I think where sales perhaps don't do the best job is they don't have the time, they don't have the skill set to build really um, relevant collateral for that customer. And if you think about trying to understand a new prospect, reading their annual report, finding out what are their key challenges that could be solved by your business, that's a month's work, you know, to undertake all of that research, start that engagement process, um, identify the buying center, those people that you want to contact. Um, and I think, you know, sales and marketing could deliver much stronger results by working together in that kind of scenario. It did that does present a really good opportunity, I think, for working together. Um, you kind of need marketing to use the tools, the technology, the automation that we have available to do that level of work at scale, because any individual account owner, you've got a number of accounts, but there's just you. You're also dealing with all the daily issues, customer queries and problems. You can't go away and work happily in isolation for a month to do a job and then come back with a nice project. Um, Marketing can definitely help you to do that. And I think where I've seen it work pretty well before is 
marketing go away, use their tools and do that that creation period where you've got fantastic collateral, really strong commercial, almost disruptive commercial insight that makes the end prospect or target kind of sit up and think, okay, that's interesting. But then for it really to be successful, you've got to work so closely together with sales because otherwise marketing end up taking somebody to the point of a hello, so maybe an introductory meeting. But actually, what the business really, really cares about at the end of the day is always going to be revenue. So, you know, you can have hundreds or thousands of leads. It depends on the size of your business and, and the quality that you're achieving. But it's the conversion to revenue that's really, really important. And I think where I've seen it break in the past is if marketing creates something that they consider to be a hot lead or an MQL, depending on how you define it. Um, if that's not then picked up on because you've got the right sales processes or the right relationship with that individual salesperson, literally the same day or the very next day or at um, at worst in the second week, that, that lead will go cold really, really quickly. And then all of that work that you've done over the previous month will just, it, it's worthless and you've wasted that investment. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was going to say as well, you know, it, like following on that, that train of thought, you know, when 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 you do have the sales conversation right you can you can pick up again one i suppose validation of 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 the message that generated the lead and the conversation in the first place but actually additional insight again particularly dan in your case working with large high value accounts additional insight into the account that's like that's like gold dust to a marketer to get that feedback loop going right to enrich further you know marketing content engagement you know things that the the, the accounts and the businesses really care about right so you know have have you seen that kind of that that loop that process working well or do you see like you know maybe that's something that that doesn't work so well today and is really an area to to improve um yeah i think that um when you think about um customer satisfaction scores and things like that i think that uh, the engagement between sales and marketing can really boost those scores and it shows a customer that you know you really care about them because you want to understand their business to such um uh, you know a, a strong extent yeah, it can actually help to, to deepen the relationship and expand the relationship, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. from a from a deal value size as well as, a, I suppose, a lifetime, you know, value and, and relationship perspective. Yeah, and often, you know, if you find yourself responding to an RFP, um, you know, that can be the way to engage more deeply so that you could, um, you know, really augment that relationship, find something that other bidders hadn't noticed and really make a mark on that uh, on that prospect yeah yeah no absolutely no and 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 i suppose you know expanding on the the generating demand and you know from a volume perspective as well which which is um a lot of my background um you know i i see the it's a constant balance between the the quality and the quantity um, there's always a demand of, of marketing in, you know, in a volume type environment to to do more, to deliver more. But you always have to strike that fine balance between doing more, but maintaining the quality. And I think that's where, again, the close relationship and dialogue between your sales colleagues is, in fact, actually producing more demand but lower quality can actually make your sales process ineffective right because you know you can spend more time following up on leads that that just aren't in a position to to buy now so you're 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 burning those you know productive sales hours and actually what you want to do is monitor the you know the conversion rate so it's a really focus in on on the quality of, of what you're generating is it converting at the right level can I, as a marketer, working with my sales colleague and sales manager, help improve the, you know, the conversion rate, the quality of the, the conversations that my sales colleagues have with those leads on the phone in order to drive the conversion rate and, and ultimately then result in, you know, more wins and, and revenue to the business? 
that the answer is not always to generate more leads. Sometimes it's a case of looking at conversion rate and, and the quality of the conversation. But if I do generate more, how do I ensure that that I maintain the, the quality? Well, that's it. And as you're increasing um, the volume, you need to make sure that the marketing team are only increasing volume to an extent that the sales team can cope with, because it could be a scale up business where actually it's the CEO who is the sales team today. And OK, they've got other people in the business that act as the account managers, but there is no point in delivering tens or even hundreds of anything to them because it will just, you know, go by the way and it can't yeah. it can't be actioned. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put down on the spot now and I'm going to imagine if you had a magic wand, is there something you can think of or, or that, that I guess marketing could do differently, act differently, think differently? What would it be to help you as a salesperson in your role more? I think as a sales, well, if I think about the marketing function, it's incredibly broad. But if I think about what would make a difference to a salesperson, it's all about, you know, these hot new prospects and how do you make a really significant impact on them so that you can accelerate the sales cycle, particularly in today's environment. You know, many opportunities have been put on ice. Budgets are significantly constrained. Um, performance of many companies will be, um, you know, degraded um, very significantly. And so salespeople are looking for ways to cut that, um, you know, buying process in half. And to do that, you need to engage the most senior people within the organization. They're the decision makers. They're the individuals, um, you know, who will decide whether the technology that you're selling uh, is going to have a strong return on their business. And to do that, the, you know, historic way of picking up the phone, writing a, you know, detailed email, reaching out to LinkedIn, they just get lost uh, amongst, you know, a thousand other, um, you know, communications of that type. Mm -hmm. And I think where marketing could help sales, a salesperson like myself is on an account based basis. So together we need to um, qualify those prospects very, very carefully. We need to research those prospects. We need to build um, collateral, which is um, unique, targeted and relevant to the individuals of the buying centre of that prospect. And by doing that, you can make such a mark on that individual that they want to hear more about you know, what your organisation has to offer. And that can't be done by, a sale, by the sales function alone and it can't be done by the marketing function alone. And I think there's you know, opportunity for very strong return on investment by partnering and collaborating in that way. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting because actually marketing refer to all of that, everything you've just spoken about as account-based marketing. You know, there's reams and reams of information and programs and specialists out there. But actually, I know having spoken to you offline that you call it business development. Just, you know, create business, convert the business successfully. So they've got two different functions within a business, call it something completely different. And actually, I know from my own conversations in the past, if you talk to some um, in a kind of scale up environment or a smaller business, if you start talking about account based marketing programs, that terminology isn't familiar, but actually we all want the same outcome, which is why, you know, you can almost have a wry smile on your face when you think about she said there, there is definitely a rivalry between sales and marketing but ultimately if you're in the business of revenue generation then you have got the same objectives you just work at it from slightly different angles and different parts of the funnel don't you yeah for sure i think you know business development is about researching your customer and doing everything you can to you know make your company and your products unique but I think the challenge for salespeople is they've got so many prospects and so many existing customers. The quality of what they do for brand new uh, prospecting opportunities is always going to be slightly curtailed by the time that they have available within their you know, day to day role. 
and and it, and if you let the process drag on too long, the research you d you've done is already out of date. And so that's why I think, you know, as you call it, account-based marketing. If you can take an intensive period of collaboration between marketing and sales, and go through a kind of step-by-step -step process, you know, where you where you define that process very very clearly, and go through those stages, then I think you can really accelerate the sales cycles with customers. And for me, that's what's crucial right now because, you know, the current business environment means that many purchasing decisions are being uh, delayed and so that you know has a, a big impact on your potential performance of the business and the performance of the salesperson so i'd see account-based marketing as this way to you know put a put a rocket under your um, prospecting capability so that you can see results you know before the end of the financial year perfect yeah you 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 have described perfectly dan how account based marketing should should work right it's it's not a it, it's definitely not a marketing campaign it is a really focused concentrated period of of sales and marketing working together with with the deliberate outcome in mind so I'd say that was that was really valuable um, insights today, Dan. So thank you so much for uh, for joining us on our on our first webcast, and we we look forward to uh, to, to seeing everyone soon. That's a pleasure.